Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Take Two Radio Music. I almost felt like doing like a Dracula intro. (laughs) Good (laughs) evening, everybody. (laughs) Welcome to Take Two Radio. I'm Pam, your host. Yes, I'm the nutball. And with me tonight as my co-host is David, and most of you know who he is by now. Hello, David. Hi, Pam. How are you? Oh, I'm excited. Can't you tell? (laughs) Yes, I'm very excited today. Well, why don't you go ahead and start out the introduction. I will. Thank you. Today, our special guest is a two-time Daytime Emmy winner for Outstanding Supporting Actor in Guiding Light for his role of Ross Marler. And also the very, very handsome... Clint Buchanan, Mr. Jerry Verdorn. Hello, you Jerry. Too. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> Thank you, David. That's very nice. We, that was something different. Normally I announce all the guests, and David wanted to get in there because he just thinks you're the bee's knees. <laughs> the bee's knees. Well, he did a good yep. job, and here we are. <laughs> so how are you today? How's it going? What you been up to? Well, good. I just came back from Stamford, Connecticut, and that is where we uh, we taped the show. And I visited my friends and all my children who are now taping. And the reason I went there is that I did the show that's going to air every Friday, which is going to be like a recap, a tease for the next week, interviews with a bunch of actors, some outtakes. It's going to be a very good, very good. Uh, fun day for the fans to see because it's something completely different and we taped my episode i don't think i'm giving anything away by saying i was interviewed in uh, a set i'm very familiar with in vicky's lord library mm-hmm. so uh it was it was a lot of fun and uh i got to say hi to my friends and all my children and uh and i got back about uh, four this afternoon and uh, here we are together Yay, yes, we are together, and everybody is beyond excited to have both One Life to Live and All My Children back. This is a day that we have fought for for, what, two-plus years, and it's just, or maybe two years. I'm not sure exactly of the date right now off the top of my head. Either way, we've been fighting a long time. (laughs) Isn't it wonderful to actually say that even? to yes. say welcome back to One Life to Live and All My Children because there were so many people, and myself included for a while, that thought this is impossible. I mean, it, it, we had a nice run. It, you know, they tried to do it, and the reproduction of the whole shows became a soap opera in themselves. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's on, it's off, it's on. There's more rumors, it's on. Maybe it's on in a different way. So everybody was just sort of... And once they got disappointed the first time, they became a bit jaundiced. They became a bit bitter, saying, "Right, you know, you, we've been teased, we've been punked, we've been, you know, all this stuff." And then when the uh, the rumors started again about, you know, this could this could actually happen because they started agreeing to contracts with the unions, then momentum started gathering and oh my gosh and then i got a call sometime i don't know late december saying i think this is a go was the voice on the other end and uh i said well keep me posted (laughs) and uh they did and once i heard the basic structure of how it's going to be run and who was who they had hired it was such quality people that i said uh well, after about 15 minutes of thinking about it, I said, uh, I'm on board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so here we are today. And I think until April 29th, which was our first air date on Hulu, mm-hmm. Hulu Plus, and iTunes, mm-hmm. right. until people saw it on the screen, I don't think they really believed that this was happening. I, like, I, I do have to say that when I heard the rumblings again of it starting up, I was one of those people that kept saying, until I see it on my screen, I'm not going to believe a word of this because of what yeah. happened the prior time. You know, yeah, but as more and more information came out and more and more of the actors started, you know, verifying the information was correct, you know, it made you want to believe again. And, you know, you, you always have that hope in you. Um, exactly. But, there was always hope that it... Mm-hmm. 
these people who are not newcomers to show business, Prospect Park I'm talking about. Right. They are two very intelligent men who run this, um, Rich and Jeff. And uh, I knew something was going to happen even after the first disappointment because these two guys are not only good at what they do, but they're competitive. And they own the the lease on these two shows for 11 more months after the initial disappointment by saying, mm-hmm. we're not going to do this anymore, which happened to be on my birthday, November 23rd, by the way. Oh. Oh, and yeah. my wife said, well, this is God telling you to retire. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. And uh, But I, I said to her, they've got this situation in their pocket for 10 or 11 more months. Or knowing these guys, I doubt they're just going to sit on it and do nothing. And uh, as it turned out, they they started uh, immediately after they announced they weren't going to do it, they started working on a way to do it in a different version. So they probably they restructured of how they were going to initially do it? Yes, because they were very, very aggressive at first by saying it's going to go off ABC Friday and it's going to be on the online network on Monday morning. Well, you know, that's tough to do, particularly with two shows. Oh, yeah. And one of the casts lives on the West Coast and the other cast lives on the East Coast. So the logistical problem, and then, you know, all they had to deal with uh, four unions, the writers and the directors and the actors and, you know, one more union. And uh, they had to completely, because this is uncharted waters, this is not network television, they had to completely work out a new contract for each one of these unions. And mm-hmm. that, as you well know, that doesn't happen <laughs> very quickly. Right, right. So anyway, they, they started trying to figure out, you know, how can we do – this show, 52 weeks a year, um, with one group of people living on the West Coast and the other people living in the East Coast, and, not, and we don't have any more sets because ABC destroyed them all. They'd have to start from ground zero. And so and that's essentially what they did. They started from show business ground zero, and uh, I was shocked the first day I walked in and saw the saw the studio, and I started working. It was it was so wonderful. David, did you want to say something? Um, I was just um, flabbergasted um, by how how well it looked compared to your ABC ca- sets. Yeah, I, was, I mean, <laughs> I, uh, if you can imagine me on Monday morning, um, I said. Oh my God! These people really? know what they're doing. Yeah, I thought it looked lush, sounded great, moved along, and you know they rebuilt all these sets, and the Lord Library looks like it always did, except better. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and that's what Erica Slezak said. It's like being in the Lord Library, except much improved. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, all the comments I've been getting is uh, sort of goes around the phrase, it looks better than I thought it would, meaning the production values and the audio and yeah. all, the, all the, the number yeah. of cast members they got back. It, it looked, it exceeded expectations, which is always nice to do. Right, exactly. I mean, we were all very impressed with how mm-hmm. everything looked on the sets. It's just... Even the outside scenes look, you know, so much more real than what they do on TV. Yeah, I know. And it's anyway, uh, very well. They have hired from, because I've seen technical people from CBS, ABC, and NBC. So they've hired a lot of, we've got some great cameramen and audio people, and they they hired the same uh, wardrobe people. Each show got about 90% of their cast that they wanted to come back. And the recast on our show, at least, I don't know about all my children, but the recast on our show, these are terrific performers. They are. Corbin Blue, yeah, Mm -hmm. and Robert Gorey and uh, Laura, who plays uh, Destiny. They're going to be household names in about uh, a couple weeks. (laughs) 
Definitely, I, definitely. I'm very happy with the recast because that's not an easy job to have. No, it is not. And, you know, I know firsthand that mm-hmm. uh, being a recast myself in this role, the, and to be honest with you, back eight years ago or whatever it was, I actually had qualms about whether I wanted to audition for this, and they did hold auditions um, because there were about four or five guys they were looking at. And I wasn't quite sure that I wanted to do a recast of such an important character because over the years I'd seen audience members, you know, not take to a recast. Right. And that can make a performer's life difficult. (laughs) I would say (laughs) so. You know, if everybody is saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not, you know, he's not really that guy. The original guy is that guy. So uh, so I'm glad that we uh, got these two young people and uh, that they have such a large storyline. I'm trying to not give away a couple mm-hmm. of things. Yeah, right. uh, but, but they're heavy in the storyline coming up. Well, what's it like to see? I mean, first of all, there's one thing where they age the children, but these children have really been aged. What's it like to see the young kids so grown up now? Um, who are you speaking of uh, directly, like the babies? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they, the babies, as it's not uncommon in daytime, they suddenly age by two or three years, and uh, it it helps. You know, you get a creative license with the audience. They will accept that if it propels good story forward, and that's what they're doing, and that's what uh, and that's what we're about with these uh, with these kids. Yeah, it's it's kind of strange to see them talking um, to the old, you know, like you guys talking to the kids, but they're actually teenagers now, and and more like I'm guessing in their twenties because they're all drinking, you know, and going yeah. to the club. So it's strange, but yet it fits. It fits with what's going on now. I think it fits, and uh, we had a, let's see, what day was it? April 23rd, I believe it was. We had a premiere where they showed everybody who was involved with the shows and some fans, and I don't know how the fans got these tickets. People have been asking me, but uh, it was a good idea to have fans there because they brought a lot of energy uh, to the evening, and it... uh, they were sort of the spokesman for other fans saying, yeah, it actually happened. I saw it. You know, there are, <laughs> there are episodes of the show's going on. I saw all my children, and then I saw One Life to Live. So it was uh, it was good publicity in that way. And uh, that was the first time I had seen it put together because from the very moment we started, we've been shooting out a sequence, of course. Mm-hmm. And so you don't really know how it's going to look. And how it's going to sound, and you know, you have an idea in your head, especially the veteran players, but uh, you don't really know until you see it um, spliced together by the editors. So, this is true. I was very, very as surprised as the fans <laughs> that now, it looked so good. What, what was what were your emotions when you saw the first episode? They were very similar to when the. The first time I walked onto the set with Erica, and there was Bob Woods, and, you know, there's Hillary, and all your old friends that you haven't seen for 14 months, and you're suddenly given scripts, and you're back dancing together in uh, very familiar sets and uh, doing new story. So it was uh, it was very exciting, and the first time I saw the, the brand-new opening and then the show starting, it was sort of... I was similar to fans. I, I'm saying to myself, oh, my God, this is actually happening. <laughs> and we're, 